And welcome to the Jeff Capel Show. He's one of the greats. 979 points in two seasons here at the University of Pittsburgh. Brings back a lot of great memories, and he joins us now, Dewan Blair. Dewan, how you doing, man? How you doing, man? How you doing, coach? Doing great, man. Great to have you here. Appreciate it. Jeff, what do you remember about Dewan, the player? Beast. Absolute beast. <laughs> I remember I saw him in high school, and I was, uh, I was in my first season. Actually, I don't think I had coached a season yet. I, was, I had just gotten a job at Oklahoma, and it was in July. I saw him, and I can't remember. I, I want to say I called or text to see if he would have an interest because I was just how hard he played, how physical he was. He rebounded. He was athletic. And at the time, we had Blake Griffin already committed. And I just remember thinking, like, if, if I get him, like, we will get literally every rebound. <laughs> and no one would be able to guard our front court, and we could win a national championship and all of these things. But I've, I've always been a huge fan of his from afar. Appreciate it. Um, I've gotten to know him since I took this job and even bigger fan of him as a, as a man now. Um, and I'm glad he's back here. I'm glad he's back on campus. And really want him uh, you know, around our guys, especially our big guys, as much as possible. I think it's really cool that you're back to school. Yep. What, what are you studying, and, and why was that important to you to come back? Uh, I'm studying uh, business entrepreneurship, and it's just important. Like, um, basketball isn't always going to be here, so, you know, um, I just want to get, get my degree just to, just to have something to, you know, fall back on. You know, it, 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 basketball didn't buy me uh, – a, little, a long way, you know, I had a great career, so I think it's about time to, you know, take the next step and uh, find a, a, a different journey, so. Is it still special every time you walk in this building? What's, what's oh, it always, like for you? Always, always. Um, go from high school, my high school championship, uh, playing here, and um, even before I even came to college, you know, um, so this is always a, a special place for me because, you know, Winning two city city league championships here, you know, and then coming and playing and having the two seasons, uh, it, it, it was fun. All right, let's start with that high school team. Dude. <laughs> I've heard so much about this team. <laughs> How would you describe your high school team? Oh, man, uh, definitely one of the best, you know, uh, in PA. I think we could have ran with any, anyone. Um, DJ Kennedy, uh, DeAndre Kane. Your brother? You no, know, Greg Blair, you know. Jamal Brown, we had, it was just a five, you know, we all from this uh, same neighborhood, you know, the Hill District up there, so um, we already had the, uh, you know, the relationship, we already knew with how each other played, and, you know, we we played with each other all year round, you know, it wasn't nothing, we just played at high school, it was AAU, um, street ball, you know, anything, so we knew each other, we knew what, it, what we wanted, and, uh, you know, we fell short our junior year for the state championship, but you know, we came back with a vengeance, so. Did you ever get the sense when you guys walked into a gym that you already won the game the minute you walked in? Like, every, you could see a look. Every game. <laughs> really? Every game. <laughs> every game, we're like, okay, uh, you know, we'll tell the, uh, you know, the, the players who don't play a lot, they're like, all right, y'all, y'all going to play you know, second, <laughs> second half. <laughs> that, Jeff, so I'm sure you've seen teams like that. No, I, I definitely have, and I've seen guys. I mean, when, when I played at Duke, you know, we had a we had a we had a team like that my freshman yeah. year. We were like that a little bit. And then when I was at Oklahoma, you know, I, I used to watch, especially Blake's sophomore year, when we played home games, I used to watch the opposing team watch the video they showed when they did our starting lineup. And it was all of his dunks, like these incredible plays, and you'd look down there and you'd see defeat. It's one of the reasons, this is a true story, like when we were playing in the NCAA tournament that year, it was his last year, it was 2009, they played Villanova and that shot that's, that's obviously heartbreaking. I wanted that game, so we is going to play. Yes. We is going to play yeah. him. And, so, and, and so for me, and so for me, <laughs> this is the honest to God truth. They were probably the only team besides North Carolina, not that I was afraid of, but that I kind of was like, and the reason is him, I knew he wouldn't be scared of Blake. Uh -huh. Most of the teams we played that year, <laughs> but I'm saying serious, most right. of the teams we played that year, they were afraid of him. But the more I watched them, I was like, okay, he won't be afraid of him. Like this would be, in fact, he'd go after him. 
And so it's one of the reasons why. You can't say it on radio. He's shaking his head like, yeah. (laughs) But it's one of the reasons why I admired him, again, from afar for so long um, because of his competitive spirit and just uh, how he attacked. He didn't fear anything, anyone, and he played with such passion. That becomes contagious, and it's one of the reasons why this program was so good for so long because you've got guys like Brandon and all these guys and they taught the younger guys. I'm pretty sure when he was a freshman, the older guys taught him what it's like. They didn't have to teach him how to play hard or to have passion. He had that, but just what it's like. And, and it's one of the reasons why I admired him. What's, what's, what's wild, um, he going from that to older guys, it was like <clears throat> uh, Brandon, um, Chevy, you know, I knew them all before I even came here. You know, they will always come to the high school games, Coach Dixon. Um, so it was it was always fun to see them. You know, um, being from the neighborhood that I'm from, we don't see, you know, they were celebrities. We don't, you know, the Steelers, the, <laughs> we, when we see pros and, and, and Panthers, we like, oh, man, that's Julius Page, you know. <laughs> like, that's, that's how, you know, uh, I remember me and my father, we, we came, uh, they played Syracuse, and we watched, uh, you know, Carmelo play. You know, when we were sitting up, I could I could touch the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, like I remember all of that. And, you know, just coming here and, and, you know, just having a passion for, first of all, Pittsburgh, you know, and then knowing that I got to keep, I got to keep the aggression, you know, from high school to the, you know, I'm, I'm coming in, I'm not sitting down. <laughs> that was my thing. Right. I'm not sitting down. I don't care who in my way, if you're my teammate or not. I just want to come in here. We're going to win. I told the Vance Fields before we, uh, before we even, when we train at camp, I'm like, okay, I'm coming here. I win. I don't, I don't do nothing else. <laughs> you know, so we're going to get to the Big East Championship. We're going to win it. And we had to go through these <laughs> two dudes named uh, uh, Hashim Thabit and <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> hold it right there. Because I, I want to ask you about it, see if you're still getting Christmas cards from Mr. Thabit <laughs> as we continue with Dewan Blair here on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. I love the connection that we're starting to develop together. X Man drives all the way in. East Tony, 15 footer is good. McGowan goes in for the jam. Wow! And the place is on fire. We have to fight for it, we have to want it, and we have to go take it. That's our focus right now. We're going to be good. Trust me on that. Welcome back to the Jeff Capel Show as we are continuing to be joined by Dewan Blair. And Dewan, I, I, I'll go right at it. Hashim Thabit. It was February 17th, I think, 2009. <laughs> I, I guess that really that's your kind of like your Jerome Lane moment. Oh, okay. uh, what, what do you remember about that? And have you run into him since? <laughs> <laughs> Um, was the flipping them intentional? Was it intentional when you flipped them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Best and, question and, of the year, right and, there. And it was because I knew, okay, either I'm gonna take his arm or I'm gonna take his body. <laughs> He's not gonna get the ball though, because I had it so low. See, that's what I mean. Like we, I need guys that think like that right now. Yeah. Like, we need a guy from the Hill District. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Man, like the, just. Cause it was, I mean, it was, it was a fun game. That was, one, that, was, that was a fun game. Have you run into him at any point since? So, so after, uh, the year after, I went to the league, and we both at the NF, NBA combine. And um, we walking out of the restaurant, and he's walking, like, down the street. <laughs> he crosses the street. <laughs> it goes on the whole other side. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> he was still what's mad. Yeah, like, man, what's going on? So, 
you know, after that, I, I haven't really ran into him. <laughs> What's your best moment here? I think my my best moment was the Big East Championship. Because the road to get there was, it was wild, you know. We had to win four and four. We got to do it, you know, because of the team we had, you know. It was Ronald's last year, Keith, and, and it was my first time in the Garden, <laughs> you know. So so it's like, okay, now we we got to send them home with a bang. All right, my seniors, I got to. I got to show them my respect and that's how to play hard. I got to I, I got to play the best of my ability and bring the best out of them. You know, so that whole experience was was amazing because we all was together every every moment of it. That's what made us get to the, you know, the Big East Championship. It was so big, you know, cuz it was tough, you know. Like I said we had had to go through the beat. Uh, you know, Roy Hibbert, uh, Marquette, you know, um so it was it was a lot. And plus, my dad got to see that, so that was that was pretty big. That's really cool. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you what you would have done to Blake Griffin. <laughs> we want we want to we'll find that out. I want to ask you what you think of Jeff and the program right now, and also a little bit about where you're from and how you're still involved in the Hill District as we continue. It's Dewan Blair here on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And welcome back. And all right, Dewan, I'm going to get right at it. If you would have faced Jeff and Blake Griffin, what would you have done to Blake Griffin? I know I would have stepped up to the challenge, you know, because, you know, he was the, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the best out there. What, were you guys ever nervous? I mean, you, you always look so confident as a group. Mm -hmm. Was that, did you always have that? Um, yeah. I mean, when Levan, I mean, if we need a big shot, LeVan's got it. If it come off, I'm, a, <laughs> you know, I'm going to grab the board. So <laughs> it was like, it was like we, we know we had each other's back. You know, it was it was plenty of games when Levan saved us. You know, Xavier game. You know, to get to Villanova, and he 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 makes a shot. Duke game. You know, he he you know he was always our big big hitter. You know, but he knew how to you know get the ball to me and Sam and, and the rest of the fellas. So you know, he was he was really you know uh, the hit of the snake. You know, as far as control of the team and 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 being that leader. So. He was, it was so so fun playing with him and then playing with Sam, knowing what Sam going to bring. You know, he's going to give us 20, you know, so we already know that. Stay out of his way or he, <laughs> or, or he won't pass the ball for the rest of the game. <laughs> All right, so because he's on staff now, mm -hmm. what was Ronald like? Because I'm, I'm sure he's told Jeff stories, right? He's, I've heard oh, a lot yeah. of stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ronald, Ronald is like, he was um, like the person I would go to you know, just for anything. When I was a uh, freshman, I, I knew Ronald before I came to Pitt. So, you know, I always knew, like, he had a shot or whatever. But when I got here, I'm like, man, like, <laughs> this is what, oh, we're going to have some fun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, he could dribble. I just got to get him open for me to get open. Yeah, so smart. Right? So, that, that, I mean, you're asking, that's all I, all I used to tell him was, all right. And, and he was one of the first people, him and LeVan, it's like, all right, we got to get the screening down. You know, that's why I'm so I, I, I was so good to, you know, um, be be on screen and and come and and receive the ball and knowing you to you know it's just a whole bunch of things. Then I did happen to fall into San Antonio, so it was like the same you know the same program. So it was fun, man. Ronald Ronald gave us everything and and he was a great teammate. We've seen some transition in the program, oh. and now Jeff's here. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the program and and what Jeff is doing? We're headed in the right direction. Um, we was down a couple years, but you know, um, with him, I just think everybody has to hop on board, you know, because I mean, look what look 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 who he is and and what what he brings. So uh, once the players really really understand that and know that he's down, you know, for them and really like, you know, wants to be great, uh, sky's the limit for us, you know. Let's assume the players are listening right now. Mm -hmm. What would you want them to know? about pit basketball you played and what pit basketball can be? Um, well, when I played, it was, it was straight, you know, hard nose. And practice was game. You know, we, 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 we practiced like it was, it was game like, you know, if you fall, get up. You know, if you bleed and go ahead, we got, to know, we, got, we got somebody else to come in. You know, we're not going to, you know, take it light or just because it's a player, we're not going to foul him. No, we're going to get down and dirty and, and realize this is, this is we all we got. This is what we're here for. We're not here for nothing else, you know. So 
once we really got into that into that mode and really you know understood that you know we I mean we 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 a family we we have our ups and downs our fights and you know every that but we knew you know game day we got to bring it for each other we ain't trying to lose we don't want to be on you know ESPN was big we don't, we don't <laughs> want to be on the uh, bottom line you know so that's right. I'm like, all right, we got to do it. We got we to gotta get this team out by halftime. You all right. know? <laughs> Juan, we're going to do this again Definitely. a little later in the season. Yeah. There's so many other things we yeah. want to discuss. Definitely. Some of the stuff maybe during the break that we can <laughs> clean up and discuss as well. I appreciate Juan Blair, man, me, man, hey, congrats on your career. Thank you And, so you know, much. a lot of those highlights were called by the voice you hear when you think of Pitt basketball. <laughs> exactly. He is going to join us next. It's a Jeff Cable show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And welcome back inside the Peterson Event Center in this beautiful Pitt Studios. You know, Jeff, it's like getting a player back early in the conference season. We now have the voice back. Absolutely. In conference season. And Jeff, I know what you know what Bill means to the program and university. Oh, uh, no question. I mean, he's a he's a staple of of Pitt basketball. But really to me, Pittsburgh sports, when you think of the Pittman the, the Pitt athletics program, but then when you think of the Steelers, um, you know, you think of Mr. Hillgrove here and what he's meant, the passion that he has, the consistency, the longevity, all of those things. And it, it speaks volumes when you have a guy that's done it for so long but still prepares, still has the passion, and still uh, is so good at what he does and constantly trying to learn. I mean, that's, that's what the greats do. I don't think there are many greats, but he is certainly one of them. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, Jeff. Great job uh, in, in my Turn stead, uh, but uh, I'm ready to go. That's right. Uh, and Carolina, bring on those Tar Heels, yep. <laughs> and uh, I'll be ready to go at noon on Saturday. <laughs> what have you learned about this team watching them? Um, well, first of all, I don't have the ACC network. <laughs> uh, so I've listened to you guys, and I've learned a lot by listening. And uh, I went to the game, the Louisville game, yep. and watched from the Chancellor's box, and that was interesting. But... Um, you know, th this team, um, it has, you know, the missing link. Yep. You, you need one or two more players. But that having been said, these guys, they go out there and play like they're going to win. And, okay, sometimes they do, and they've had some great wins. And then, like the other night, that was, uh, that was a tough one because you could almost feel it coming. Yep. You know, trading threes for twos doesn't doesn't jibe. Dewan was just in studio, obviously. What what do you remember about him and what was it like calling doing play by play with Dewan? Well, when you walked into any gym, you knew you weren't going to be out physical. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was going to take charge. And uh, you know, that that set a tone for that team. And that team had all good elements, you know, the up fake from Sam and you know, the, yeah. the, the Levance and those guys that take care of the ball. Ronald Ramon, you know, uh, we're down seven against West Virginia. And um, well, it was a minute and a half, I think. And uh, come out of a timeout, and I'm sure Coach Huggins said to his team, don't let Ramon touch the ball. <laughs> as soon as he got the ball on that left wing, Huggins started for the locker room because <laughs> he knew what was coming next. Uh, you know, moments like that. And then walking east on 53rd Street, into the sun mm -hmm. after winning those two Big East tournaments, it was, it was pretty special. What has it meant to you to be the voice of the Panthers? Gosh, um, I thought when I did it for a couple of years uh, that, um, okay, I'll do this for 20 years and that'll be a, a legacy. That'll be fine. But uh, did I ever think of 51? Of course, I started when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, and... And to do the football and the basketball and to watch the kids come through and leave. And I didn't start to feel old until the parents <laughs> of the kids called me Mr. Hillgrove. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Billy? <laughs> you are becoming part of the wall, and it's the happiest part I've ever been involved in in my life. This has been a great experience. Well, Bill, welcome back. And thank you for being so generous and for being such a good man. Um, it it has truly been an honor to sit in your seat, and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Great job, and I appreciate that, too. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you 12 o'clock, 1130 pregame, right here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We're back with more of the Jeff Cable Show on the aforementioned Pitt Panthers Radio.
lot to just, you know, mold me who I am. Pitt just has it all. Everyone is on their feet. We just witnessed history. Pitt Beyond the Script, weekly on AT&T Sportsnet. I love the connection that we're starting to develop together. X-Man drives all the way in. On East Tony, 15-footer is good. McGowan's goes in for the jam. Wow! And the place is on fire! We have to fight for it, we have to want it, and we have to go take it. That's our focus right now. We're going to be good. Trust me on that. A couple days ago, right here in this building, some new facilities were announced, part of the Victory Heights plan here at the university, and it's just part of what is eventually going to be unveiled. Um, First, I want to ask you, what's it like for coaches when you start seeing these blueprints and, and seeing it starting to come to reality of, of these new facilities? You know, you get really excited. Um, it's something that you start trying to sell and recruiting, talking about it. You know, it's, it's interesting. I heard a couple of the coaches uh, speak um, during the Victory Heights announcement, and one of the coaches talked about how when he was being recruited, the facilities and things didn't matter. And it resonated because I was the same way. But that was a long time ago. It matters now. It does. And we as older people, as adults, can say, well, it shouldn't, you should, or whatever. But you're trying to appeal to 17 to 18-year-old kids. And so the stuff matters. And so when you have an announcement like that, when you can show them renderings, you can show them things, you can show all these things that are happening, it's exciting. And it shows that the university, the athletic department, is committed to having something big time, you know, committed to improving something. And really what it does is that it, it, it improves the student athlete experience. You become even more excited when you start seeing the stuff actually happening. When you take stuff that you have on paper and now all of a sudden you see some shovels in the ground and them, you know, blowing stuff up and knocking walls down and doing things like that. And then you become the most excited when you see it finally done and you can actually walk someone through there. You guys have done a lot of what people might describe as little things. Um, but like you said, that every little detail, someone it might catch somebody's eye. It could yeah. be the jerseys that you're hanging in the back, whatever it might yeah. be. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer that little things are big things. And it could be little, but they're huge things. There are certain messages that you want to you know, like put off, there's certain images, there's certain things that you want your guys to see. And hopefully if they see it over and over, it's something that seeps in, maybe a word, maybe a phrase, maybe an image, whatever it is. And so we've tried to be uh, very strategic with what we've done as far as our messaging here. But we've done a lot, you know, here in the Pete, in our locker room area in our lounge area, our player lounge area, and everything we've done is geared towards improving the experience for the student athletes. I know you guys all get wrapped up in your seasons, then you're out recruiting, and then you try to spend some family time. Do you, do you have much interaction with the other coaches at the university? I do, I do. I, I try to, you know, send a text, you know, if they have a big win or a big game coming up, um, they do the same with me. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's been a really good, you know, community of coaches here that I think all of us support each other. I think we all have an understanding of what each other's going through. We understand how hard the job is. We understand how rewarding it is, but also the commitment that it takes to try to be really good, especially in a lot of the programs here you're trying to rebuild. Jason said it post-game on Sunday. You said it before the game on Tuesday about the zoo. And I, I just want to take a, a minute here for you to describe what it meant to have that energy that you had from the zoo and how important that is to you guys. It was big time. It was huge. And you know, we're grateful. We appreciate it, you know, for them to have the gold out and to be sold out down there. You know, we felt their energy. You know, I think we gave them some energy back. I wish we could have gotten a win for our guys and for them. You know, to me, they're part of our – when I say our guys, I'm saying them too. They're, they're part of our team. Um, but, 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 but it's huge. I mean, again, from afar, as a fan of college basketball, I always heard about this place. I would watch it on TV. I would see it. You know, my first experience here was in 2014 when I was an assistant at Duke and we came and we played here. 
So I saw it firsthand, and I know they went through some lean years, but we appreciate as we're trying to reestablish ourselves as a program, we appreciate them, you know, stepping up and supporting us. This place was always voted one of the toughest places to play. And it wasn't just the team and the players like the Juan and the other guys and things like that. A big reason was because of the zoo and the fans. And so we appreciate that. And again, we want to put a product out there that everyone's proud of and that everyone wants to come and support like they did in the past. And you can support them at noon on Saturday right here in this building. We're going to talk about the rematch with Carolina as we continue. It's the Jeff Cable Show here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. All right, Jeff, let's talk North Carolina. Um, obviously, a win there a week ago yesterday. What's different when you face a team a second time? You know, it's normally, if you've won, it's normally a little bit harder. Um, because, you know, human nature tells you that you beat them, you beat them on the road, they're coming back to your place, you probably feel a little bit confident, sometimes maybe a little bit overconfident, and the opponent is thinking revenge, you know, and things like that. So I, I think that's what it is, especially it's such close proximity. I mean, you know, we've played twice since we played them. They've just played once. They've had a week off. And to me, to be honest with you, I, I think the best thing for them is getting out of Chapel Hill. I think it's having a road game uh, because that, pro that program, and it's similar to when I played at Duke, like there's so, it can get really heavy very fast there, especially when things aren't going well and sometimes the best thing is to get away. Does that make the start as important? I mean, it's always important, but yeah. especially in this <clears throat> scenario. No, it is. I mean, it, it's important for us to get off to a good start um, and to play well. Like we – we would be mistaken, we would be incredibly immature if we just think that it's going to be easy because we beat them last time and we played a really good second half. I mean, it took us being almost perfect in the second half. I mean, we were, we, we, I think we made more threes. I think we scored more in that half than we have all year. We shot an incredible percentage. The score in the second half was 45 to 27. We have to remember why we did that, which was how hard we played, how together we were, how connected we were. We shared the ball. We made easy plays. That's why we were able to get those shots and we were able to knock them down. And I guess that's the chess match now as you try to figure out how you got there and what adjustments they may make back at you. Absolutely. And I know they're going to make adjustments. They have one of the best coaches that's ever done it. Um, and it's, it's a very, very proud program. Now, can we get DeWan two more years? I, I would think? love him. <laughs> I would love him. That would make a huge difference. Like Mr. Hillgrove said, that would make a huge difference. And he's in great shape. It was fun talking with him. It, it was great talking to him. I mean, what a what a great spirit, what a great competitor. And, again, I've gotten to know him now, a, a, a really, really good guy. We thank Bill Hillgrove for joining us as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Bill will be back on the call against North Carolina coming up at 12 o'clock, pregame at 1130 here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Panthers need you. Yes, we do. 1130 again, 12 right here on Pitt Panthers.